Aung San Suu Kyi has become an international symbol of peaceful resistance in the face of oppression like South African leader Nelson Mandela. The 66 years old has spent most of the last 20 years in some, some form of detention because of her efforts to bring democracy to military ruled Burma. She was born on the 19th of June 1945. Her father was General Aung San, who was an independence hero and national leader of Burma. After her father was assassinated in 1947, she accompanied her mother, who was a Burmese ambassador, to India. Four years later, she went to Oxford University in the UK, where she studied philosophy, politics and economics. There, she met her future husband, academic Michael Aris. Motivated by her father's determination into applying democracy in the country, she was soon pulled into leading the revolt against the military. Motivated by her father's determination into applying democracy in the country, she was soon pulled into leading the revolt against the military. Thus, inspired by non-violent campaigns of U.S. civil rights leader Martin Luther King and Indians Mahatma Gandhi, she organized rallies and traveled around the country calling for peaceful democratic reform and free elections. In 1989, she was first house arrested and held to allow for detention for up to six years without charge or trial. In May 1990, the military government called for national elections. Despite her detention, the National League for Democracy Party won the polls and the military junta refused to recognize the results. In 1991, she was awarded with a Nobel Peace Prize. Her first international book, Freedom from Fear, was published in London in the same year. Exactly 10 years ago, Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. To this day, she has not been able to come to Oslo to personally receive her award. She remains under house arrest today. We are here in Oslo in front of the Norwegian parliament and in events and locations throughout the world to tell Aung San Suu Kyi and the 1,500 political prisoners of Burma, that she and they are not alone. In 1995, the junta releases her from house arrest, but she had movement restrictions. Efforts to revive any NLD party activities have been balked, and its members have been jailed and physically attacked. In the first months after detention was ended, she was able to speak to a large gathering of supporters outside her home, but this was stopped. Yet, her popularity in the country has not diminished. Able to interview her in person and telephone interviews with the media outside Burma have also been published. Using video cassettes, she has sent out statements, including the keynote address to the NGO forum at the UN International Women's Conference in Beijing in August 1995. In 1999, Aung San Suu Kyi's husband Michael Ayres dies of prostate cancer in London. His last request to visit her 
whom he had last seen in 1995, was rejected by the military junta, which said if Aung San Suu Kyi wanted to leave the country, she could do so. She refused the offer knowing that she would not be allowed to return to Burma. In 2000, in defiance of travel restrictions, she tried to leave Rangon, but the police stopped her and she was placed under house arrest again. She was freed on May 2002 after 19 months of detention. From 2003 to 2010, she tried to work with the UN. She met several times the UN Special Envoy Ibrahim Gambari. In May 2009, Aung San Suu Kyi was arrested and charged with breaking the terms of her house arrest, which forbids visitors after John Yat, a United States citizen, swam across Inaya Lake and refused to leave her house. After reaching 15 years of detention, she was released in November 2010. Detention wasn't a barrier for her to communicate with her people. She often said that detention has made her even more sure that she should dedicate her life to representing the average Burmese citizen. Aung San Suu Kyi communication are censored and often fail to arrive. She shaped her own destiny most profoundly when she defiantly chose not to leave Burma, knowing she would not have been allowed to return if she did. Suu Kyi's speech demonstrates good oratory skills, a great public speaker with the ability to use clear words. She presented herself as the living trace of her father, Aung San, in his political project, situating the two as revolutionaries who have been called across time and space to facilitate Burma's liberation from despotic rule. Su Chi's brightly colored sarongs and customary public appearances with flowers in her hair constitute a visual rhetoric of culture and non-violence that contrasts sharply with the drab, military garb, cultural disowing and violence of her position. In an effort to situate herself squarely within Burmese tradition and the likeness of her unassuming father, Aung San Suu Kyi made a point of wearing the customary garb of the various ethnic group in Burma, rather than Western clothing, at her events. In 1997, during a speech, she said, I would therefore like to call upon those who have an interest in expanding their capacity for promoting intellectual freedom and humanitarian ideals to take a principled stand against companies that are doing business with the Burmese military regime. Please, use your liberty to promote ours. She also wrote many books in order to spread her mission to the world. Those include Letters from Burma, The Voice of Hope, Freedom from Fear. shown a positive reaction towards Aung San Suu Kyi mission. Nations like US and UK promote official campaigns for human rights, democracy and development in Burma. Singers like Bono from U2 dedicated a song to Aung San Suu Kyi called Walk On. how she's fighting for democracy without the uses of forces. The Lady is a movie made on the honor of Aung San Suu Kyi. It tells the story of her life sacrifice and fight for Burma's freedom, a story of devotion and human understanding set against a background of political turmoil which continues today. Hello. Mother had a stroke. How long are you going to be away? A week. Or maybe two. 
This morning, soldiers opened fire on protesting students close to Rangoon General Hospital, killing and injuring many. Madam, I may believe you are the only person who can lead Burma into democracy now. Your father fought and won independence for Burma. He has an opportunity to finish what he began. Courage, sir. Courage. You've got to yeah. 